What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to read a DB. So we're gonna be talking about three different looks here that a DB can come at you. We're gonna be talking about press off man, a physical press DB at the very end of this clip. So we're gonna be talking about how you can read that, what you can do, and how you can understand what the DB is trying to accomplish, okay? So it's all gonna be about kind of the IQ side of things for the wide receiver position. So I hope this video gives you guys some value, but also fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you wanna learn about 20 new press releases, so 20 different press releases, specific drills to work on those press releases, and when to use those press releases in a game situation, check out that very first link in there, our description for this video for a 45 minute long video of all the press releases you can use, specific drills and the situations when to use them. It's probably the best thing that we offer on our website for press releases. So it will really help you out if you struggle with that. So check out that very first link in the description. Let's get started with this video. So first route we're looking at here is from Jerry Judy and this DB is in this kind of like inside shade catch technique, right? So we're on the ball in this case, right? So Judy's on the ball and we see this DB inside shade, but we got about one to two yards off to work. So we can anticipate that this DB probably won't be trying to lunge me, lunge at me and try to choke me and be real physical. We can anticipate that he's kind of in a catch technique situation right here. So what does that mean? What does catch technique mean for you? Those of you that don't know, and you're not familiar with this page and some of the older videos that we've done, what this catch technique is, is he's waiting for us to go forward, then he's going to get hands. So he's inside shade, right? So he, we know as a receiver, we don't want, he's not going to let us cross his face. If I try to cross his face or I try to attack, his leverage. He's going to keep his leverage to the inside. He wants to force me to the outside so he could get hands and use the sideline as his help, right? So he's trying to close down the field, make it a very tough throw for the quarterback. And especially on an out route, like we're working right here, that's something that it, it would be very, very bad for a quarterback. And we're not going to be able to get the ball, right? So I know that he's not going to get hands. So when I come off the line of scrimmage, I know that I have a little bit of space to work. So I could work this one, two, I could work this one, two in space. And you see how Judy does a great job of threatening him to the inside. Because again, where does he not want us to go? He doesn't want us to cross his face. So if I could threaten him to the inside, that will move that DB off that platform because he the worst his worst nightmare when he's inside shade and he's inside leverage is letting you cross his face. So if I could threaten him there, that's what will move him off that platform and then look what happened. I just created all this space for myself just like if he was way inside shade in the first place so I could actually burst up vertical and then actually get up to this route. And you see, it's just like a normal route. It's just like if you just ran straight and it was against zone coverage, I had the same space for myself and this DB is chasing me. So when I get a DB who's in that catch technique inside shade and I see that he's maybe two to three off I know I got some range to work I know I could attack his leverage and square him up because he does not want to let me cross his face he wants me to just run to the outside so he could get hands and he could reroute so I'm not threatened by that physical jam I know that I could just threaten him to the inside move him off that block and then work back up to my route regardless of the release that you want to choose there's a bunch of different releases that you could choose that's why we have that video on 20 different releases so there's a lot of different ways that you can approach this a lot of different things that will work but that's kind of the IQ behind it. Let's threaten him to the inside. Let's move him off that platform so I could create some space for myself. Okay. So now after this, we're going to be looking at a situation where it's off man inside shade and you got to run an inside breaking route or an outside breaking route. So watch the thing full speed. So we square him up, give him that move to the outside. Then all the space that I created for myself is where I get my separation. So now we got an off man situation. We got a rocker step right here. Okay. So I know this clip kind of cuts off, but mainly we're going to be focused on this stem, right? So I have off man. So now I get this question asked a ton. This is probably one of the more common questions that uh, that I get asked. What do I do if he's eight to 10 yards off and I have an inside or an outside breaking route, right? So again, it is the same concept. It's just a little bit deeper and they want to prevent the deep ball. And this is a little bit more common to see this. Well, you could see this off of both, but yeah, out of a slot, you could see this. You 100% you, you could see this look as a slot. Maybe you had a linebacker right here. He walks down to blitz, and then this is a safety who walks down, and it's like a z cover zero opportunity, right? So now, again, why was he inside shade? Nothing changes from him being right here from him being right here. Nothing changes. Even when he's pressed up and it looks like he's going to get physical and he's inside shade, nothing changes. He does not want you to cross his face. So that's why I want to square him up, and I want to threaten him to the inside. I want to try to threaten him off this platform. Platform, so I create this space for myself. Now, if I'm here and let's say, okay, so this receiver does a great job of angling that stem and you want to try to attack his midline, right? I want to try to attack the middle of his frame and he does a great job weaving because he doesn't want to let us just run a post, run a dig, just run like a deep over route and cross his face and get wide open. He does not want to chase you 53 yards across the field. He wants to force you to the sideline because that's his help. So when I square him off, 
I'm moving him towards that sideline. And when I move him, to, or no, I'm not moving towards the sideline. I'm moving him towards the middle of the field. So now, if I were here, and you see how this guy's name is Thayer Thomas, if I were here, and let's say I had to run an inside breaking route, I would square him up initially, then I would push to his outside shoulder, right? I would push to this shoulder to try to get him to force that hip turn, and then I could slip back underneath him. But if I got an outside breaking route, I want to continue to attack him, square that dude up, and then give him that move at the top of the break to threaten him to the inside. You see how that gets him to jump? Because again, he does not want to get beat towards the inside. I know this clip cuts off, so we're not going to focus too much at the top of the route, but that's how you want to angle your stem regardless of the route. You want to attack him. You want to square him up. And the only way I'm not squaring him up is if I got like a five yard out. I'm just getting out of this thing. Expect the ball early from the quarterback and let's make this play. But if I got a deeper breaking route, I want to square this dude up and then go. You see there, there's a bunch of clips going around of um, Antonio Brown when he was with the Raiders and it was just a straight fade. This dude would attack the leverage of the DB, get him to move, and then he's got all this space to work, especially if you're faster than the guy. That's how you have to approach this route. Let's watch it again full speed. Apologize for the clip cutting off at the top, but just mainly wanted to focus on the stem of this route and run in that corner, okay? So now we're going to be looking at Stefan Diggs here. Now, this is a great situation on how you can read a DB pre-snap and how you can read a DB post-snap that's going to be a little bit more physical, okay? So now we see this DB lined up, right? And you see how he's kind of in this stance where it maybe looks like he's going to lunge at me, right? He's in a powerful stance. I'm on the ball. I got maybe like less than a yard to work. So he'll probably be trying to get a little bit physical. So what I know as, especially as a smaller guy, right? Cause this dude's a little bit bigger than Diggs right here is that I got to use range. I got to make this DB make a decision. I got to force him to react to get as much separation as possible. So let's watch it full speed. So you see how he goes with this little split burst up to the outside and then I'm able to get space. Now the whole time he's working in a range where this dude can't get hands. So he goes with this kind of like little hesitation, kind of almost a little step back split. Now he's in a range like this split release right here. This is one of the most dangerous things you can do if you know when to use it and if you know how to use it, right? Because if I know when to split and kind of freeze this dude and I know that, okay, I'm coming to balance. I'm cool. If he shoots a hand at me, I'm fine. I'm prepared for that because again, like we talked about, you guys might've seen um, a video we're posting later today is going to be on Elijah Moore coming to balance on a slant route. And you see how he comes out here. He's, on, he's balanced. He's coming to balance. If this dude shoots a hand, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm prepared for that. So I'm in a range where this DB has has to make a decision. He could either sit here with me and read me or he could, he could come and lunge at me if he's going to get hands. And he decides to sit and read. So what I do when I got to run that slant, you see how he goes with that diamond release. And when he runs a diamond release, he's in a good range where this DB's either got to turn and run with him or he's got to lunge at him and get physical. And if he lunges at him, he loses his base. And then I could slip back underneath and get some separations. Like the video we made uh, maybe like last week, I believe it was on around like Friday, where we talked about a guy who was a physical jam. When they lunge at you, they're off balance. They lose their base. So we got to be always prepared for that. And especially as a smaller guy, I can read this bigger DB and set traps for him by going into range, going into these places where he where he has to make a decision. If you force him to make a decision and you're prepared for either outcome, that's how you can get as much separation as possible. Now, I know that's that's some, that's like an overcomplicated way of saying just run or just run away from him, right? But that's like the mental, mental side of things. That's kind of the thought process you need to have before you get into a game, before you get into seven on seven, before you get into one-on-ones. Think about the details now so we don't have to think about them later because the, the worst thing in the world is when a receiver's watching film and they see it and it's the middle of the season and they're like, oh shit, I know I should have done this, I should have done that. But it's too late, man. You can't think about that stuff. That stuff that you got to rep in practice. You can't be thinking about that stuff during a game because at the end of the day, you got to be able to play fast. But to be able to play fast, you got to be able to focus on this stuff right now and you got to be able to take it slow when you're getting better without a DB. So when you're forced up against a DB, that's when it becomes muscle memory and it's just habit because you've repped the details over and over again. Okay. So let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Good job by Diggs coming to balance, staying in range. That's how you read a bigger DB. That's how you get separation on a more physical guy. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave those in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And then also, fellas, again, 20 different press releases, 45 minute long video. We discuss every single press release, why to use the press release, specific drills to work on each one, and we give you the technique behind it and the IQ behind it of when to use it, okay? So I hope we get you guys on that video. Check out that very first link in the description again, fellas, and I'll see you guys next time.